welcome to the show. I have notes with me, your host for this episode. I'm Isa Badiola. Uh, I mix that up. I mix that order up. It's fine. This is this is natural. Uh, welcome <laughs> to the show. I have notes where uh, us in RT Animation uh, come together, hang out with a bunch of friends, and we talk about animation, creative industry, and Megazords. Um, I am Isa. I said this already. And joining me today, I have very special people. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for laughing, Jordan. <laughs> I'm not Carrie. It's I'm Jordan. <laughs> Hi. Isa, you, that intro is probably the best one so far. Oh, thank you. Uh, also, also, well, this is Josh, Joshua Kazemi. Yay. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Welcome back. Hi. Thank you. And Thanks for having me back. And Hannah McCarthy making her Yay! debut appearance. Hello. Hello, Hannah. Hey. It's me. First time viewer, long time fan. Uh, <laughs> just happy to be here. <laughs> wow. First Hannah... time attendee, not viewer. <laughs> I used the wrong word. <laughs> I've watched episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah faded into view, and I was like, wow, how nice. <laughs> That's so pleasant. That's Aww. what everybody like. What's to see? It's just Hannah oh, fading into view. Just Hannah fading into literally. Me. I just when they were when I when I was asked if I would if I could be on, I was like I literally just want an hour to talk to Issa and Jordan. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's for just let me have that time. Recorded or not? Yeah, <laughs> just put, put me in, coach. I just want to talk to them. Book a Google Meet. Start, yeah, yeah. Well, like we should just start booking time like where there's a free hour when people yeah. can hang out. I mean, we All have right. like designated social time so, like on like what is it like wednesday or something wednesday yeah. and fridays wednesdays and fridays mm-hmm. but that's with like a big group like we should just do like smaller Small uh group, group yeah. ones yeah that's a great like idea. we were we were in a meeting like an hour and a half ago that like and, <laughs> know. the meeting was an hour but it ended at about 30 minutes but then we it were did. just talking for about 25 minutes it went after a little that. off the rails there was piano yeah. playing yeah. oh that, yeah that's true <laughs> oh you guys should have been to the meet one of the meetings before that because noel started off very strong oh, by talking really? about As cheese does. <laughs> oh yeah the cheese thing. <laughs> oh hannah you don't know this okay i'd love to tell the story no. so <laughs> I've um, known about his cheese thing for years, by the way. <laughs> this what is yeah, the Welsh cheese thing? thing. <laughs> so he, I, I think it was like um, uh, Maggie was was went in and went. Sorry, I feel like I was interrupting a conversation. And Austin Harper goes, "No, we were just talking about dogs and cheese." And Noel comes in as he does, unmutes himself, and says, <laughs> "Yo, I got some opinions about cheese." <laughs> and everyone <laughs> is like, "All right, Noel, go ahead." And he goes. I think it is totally fine. It's totally acceptable if you eat cheese with something else. But if you eat cheese on its own, you're a sociopath. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Doesn't eat cheese by itself. And so Are multiple we talking people, like, like a big hunk of like cheese and just taking just like a bite out of it? Like yeah, an apple? Yeah, because that's like, pretty yeah, weird. Yeah, just cheese on its own, period. Well, like a like, slice like, of on cheese. On a charcuterie board, like little, little cheese slices. He's not yeah, down like with, he's not down with like string cheese, nothing like that. No oh, cheese yeah. on its own. God, I wish Noel would just pop in unannounced right now. I yeah. wish. Like, put him in the <laughs> center, in in the center himself. square. Himself. Yeah. His yeah. cheese senses are tingling somewhere right now. <laughs> I We're, we're going to have him on eventually, and I'm oh just going to bring yes. it up again so we can be like, Noel, please start the cheese debate. I, and need, then, to, I need to hear him explain it. Yeah. The great cheese yeah. debate. I, mean, I think he sounds like a sociopath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's projecting for sure. He's yeah. yeah. <laughs> they were like, what if you add like two different cheeses together and eat those? Is that the same thing? And I don't feel like we got a straight answer. Oh. You know? You know you know why? Because he's evasive. <laughs> yeah. Cause he made this up on the spot. Yeah, he doesn't really have a stance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was the funniest oh thing because it was like a Google Meets equivalent of several people are typing, like the moment yeah. he said that. Yeah. <laughs> And like and every other thing he while. added on it. Yes. Like it we really talked did. about cheese for oh, quite some time. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Honestly, several, I get it. <laughs> this, the uh, several people are typing thing reminded me of our like fun conversation we had yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in our in our I have notes topic sheet where <laughs> 
East, I was I was uh, in there adding some stuff for today's show, and then like Isa also popped in and was like watching me type, and she was like she was like, oh yeah, I was gonna talk about this or something like typing that in. And it was this weird conversation where like we're just typing things out as they happen. Yeah. <laughs> in like it. the body of the document. Yes. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> I was That's like, get out of here, Issa. And then she was like, hey, 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 hey. And I like, <laughs> yeah, in it. front of the type. Exactly. Yeah. And then oh um, my God, so good. she was like typing something out. And like, I knew where it was going. And I just typed, no. <laughs> yes. No way. Just real time. Just absolute real time. No. <laughs> oh, gosh. Brutal. It was a, it best, was a best fun way. Like, conversation. It was like better than texting. Honestly. Because you have to wait for people. In yeah. this case, you just see them typing out, I have an opinion, and someone yeah. goes, no, shut that down. <laughs> <laughs> you two were, like, uh, back in the old times before COVID, <laughs> y'all were, yeah. like, desk mates. Did yes. you, would That's you have true. actual conversations, or would you, like, slack next to each other? Uh, both with column A and B. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Depends who we want to hear the conversation. Yes, there Great. would be a point where I oh think things would happen, and I'd look at Jordan... And then I'd start typing, uh, the, so yeah. he would know. <laughs> well, she would be she would be in this position. Like here's here's the keyboard. She would be like this. <laughs> look at me, and then I would like. <laughs> and she'd start typing. <laughs> uh, That's how it went. Wow, real, <laughs> real interaction. <laughs> well, oh, hello time. everyone. Good. Good to see everyone here. Hannah, this is your first time on I Have I'm, Notes. I'm thrilled. I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm nervous every time <laughs> I have to talk. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you to talk some more. Could you please? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. OK. Could, could you please um, tell everyone what you do uh, for, or what you do as a job and um, <laughs> what what your day to day is like? Great, great question. <laughs> uh, Fun fact about me, it's a running joke at the company. My job changes every six months. Um, <laughs> it keeps it fresh and exciting. Um, my my job right now, my current title is creative director. Um, I don't have a speciality <laughs> like a lot of people. Uh -huh. I'm just kind of a, a gun for hire um, amongst nice. the Rooster Teeth folks. I kind of help out wherever needed. Um, so as a creative director, I'm just kind of a resource to a variety of our different teams in development, in production. Um, and my day-to-day -day changes every single day because it really depends on, I work on lots of different kinds of projects. Mm. So, and most of those projects are in varying states of uh, development, production, post-production, and it really varies, but it's a lot of meetings now that we are remote. Um, so it's a lot of Google calls, a lot of reading through um, documents, pitch materials, scripts, um, and a lot of just talking to wonderful creative geniuses like you three. Um, oh, Hannah. That's my, that's my day to day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Thanks for the compliment. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean it. You guys are great. <laughs> oh, you're great. And you're too. also the voice of Phase. Oh, yes. That's also a thing that <laughs> is a thing. Uh, still don't understand it, how it happened. <laughs> um, but that's a thing. I'm FaZe in RVB0, yeah. which I'm very excited, so excited for people mm -hmm. to see. It was yeah. very, was really uh, cool. it was very uh, simple for us. Uh, your audition was the best one. <laughs> oh, that's, that's how it happened. That's how yeah. it's true. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> have, have, you ever, have you ever done any voice acting before? Or you've just taken a, taken a shot? None. I'd never done any before. And it was that uh, Jeb messaged me um, out of the blue when I think they had, I think they'd already sent out their call for auditions. I did not submit because um, I was like, who, me? This voice? No. Um, <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> hey, guys. I am all over the place. Um, and I was like, this monstrosity of a voice? Absolutely not. Um, and Jeb reached out, and I think he, he, I don't know if he was just saying this, um, but he said that Torian had asked if I would be interested um, in auditioning, because I think Torian really wanted to have people um, from lots of different parts of the company and really kind of go back to those roots of let's get a bunch of people who are kind of doing this for the first time, getting really excited about it. And I was like, if you want me to, I will, but I have <laughs> no background in this whatsoever. <laughs> 
Um, and so I, I did, I recorded the, the characters they gave me to try um, and then sent those in. And then they asked me to come in to do uh, an in-person read, which is where I met Josh. It was mm-hmm. great. <laughs> I was like, he's really getting to meet me in my anxious prime <laughs> um, mm-hmm. where I was completely full throttle anxiety the entire time. Um, and I, I also, fit, I had met Torian before, but only very briefly. Um, and we did that and Torian basically was like, yeah, it's you We're you're going to be phased. And I was like, you don't want to like take the weekend <laughs> to think about that. Um, that's you not Torian's style. <laughs> yeah. yeah I was like, like, surely it. he's not going to do this right now. Like surely yeah. he needs to go assess some choices. <laughs> and he was like, very like. I don't understand what you don't understand. Like this yeah. is, you're doing this now. And I was like, I didn't know this would happen this way. <laughs> um, so I panicked. And then I think multiple times was like, Noel, it's not too late. It's not too late to, <laughs> to, say, oh God, Hannah. to cancel, to cancel <laughs> me. Um, but it was also because like, I went into those readings blind. Like I didn't know anything about mm. um, the characters they had me reading for. And I thought for sure it wasn't going to be Faze. Oh. Um, Cause she's so cool. <laughs> and, and I was like, I'm a huge dork. I do not sound intimidating whatsoever. Um, and when I, especially the more time that went on and Torian shared some of the animatics and stuff he was doing with her and I got to read more of the scripts, I was like, they've made a huge mistake. They're going to regret this. She's too cool for me. Oh, I conned yeah. them. Um, so yeah, it's been very fun to, that's it's completely new to me. It's a completely new um, experience and part of my um, time here that I've never had before. Um, and it's been really amazing getting to like work with Torian and Noel and Josh and, and see all the like passion and love they're putting into that project. And we're all obsessed with it. Like everybody yeah. who works on it is like fully obsessed with it. <laughs> so I'm really excited for people to get to see it. Yay. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, when, when did you start here? Was it like 2016? 2003, I was in a garage. <laughs> no. You know, I'm kidding. Um, no. no, Hannah. <laughs> no, I, Hannah. no, not me. Um, I started, I believe, in 2016. Okay. Um, I had my four-year mark um, in September. Oh. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hannah, you do other creative stuff too, right? I remember gonna put you on blast again. Oh no! You, you were a, <laughs> oh, no. a finalist, quarter finalist for a screen, mm-hmm. a screenwriting, a script uh, contest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, I thought how you've done your research. <laughs> oh god! It's like hot one. I didn't one know now. this was an interrogation. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, yes, I, I did. I um, I submitted for a screenwriting fellowship uh, because I love writing. I love storytelling. That's honestly what I love about my job here and just in general is getting to work on um, stories with different like people and different uh, creatives. And so writing was something I've always loved doing. Um, but didn't really, I didn't have any training or education in it. I didn't go to uh, film school. Um, I didn't study screenwriting. It was not something that I, my school had. I went to like a small liberal arts college. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I studied like creative writing, but I didn't really have much uh, education in that. And so it was something I just started self kind of teaching um, in the last couple of years. I mean, just from reading things other people have done um, and obviously storytelling was something I w- always loved um, but I wrote my first screenplay my first feature a couple of years ago um, and I just refined it and worked on it and it was very it was very probably the worst thing to pick as your first feature because it's like deeply personal yeah. and based on my own like experiences in college um, but uh, so it was very much too close to the like, anything any negative critique of it I was like oh god they hate me personally as a human because they don't like this one thing um Uh, so yeah that was fun but uh yeah I finally worked up the kind of courage in the last year to start submitting to things um and it was it was really interesting to just start getting feedback from people mm -hmm. who weren't people who knew me um Mm -hmm. because my friends I'm always like well you have to be nice to me because you're my friend (laughs) you have to say it's nice um (laughs) 
So yeah, that is, I do love writing. I'm, I'm constantly bombarding again, not to make everything go back to RVB, but I'm like, Josh Noel, <laughs> I have all these questions. I have all these thoughts. I, I feel so deeply for all these characters. Let's talk about it constantly. And it was awesome. Um, it was so awesome. I, I, At one point I we were it. like, you know, Hannah's right. Like we need to, we need to, we need to punch some of this stuff up. No, <laughs> no, it was, it's because you guys did such a good job, like building these characters, and it's something I love. Same thing with like Arsal. I've been, I've been obsessively talking to Issa and Josh about that as well. Um, you know, I think the thing that I really love about storytelling is you become so just empathetically attached to if it's a well-written story, if it's a really uh, a story that resonates, you care about the characters and uh, that's really what matters. And so when you have these characters like Arsal and the characters in Red versus Blue where, um, you know, you're really invested in them. I'm the, I grew up in fandom. So like, oh, I yeah. just go, let me live here. Let me think about this constantly. <laughs> um, so that's what I love about writing and storytelling is you get to build these worlds, play in these sandboxes um, and, sh and ideally share them with other people, like get to work on it with other people, I think is super fun. I'm ranting. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> You're that's ranting, also, but uh, we're all Hannah. agreeing. Yeah, it's true. That's how Hannah ends all of her, like, um... I do! <laughs> she just goes, I'm so, ranting. And it's yeah, like, it's I'm okay, sorry. Hannah. We're, sorry, we're listening. I'm talking. Yeah, yeah. You talk too much. You have us enthralled. <laughs> it's, well, a storytelling. Well, Hannah. <laughs> a storyteller who talks too much. Oh. <laughs> Gosh. Um... So on our topic sheet, uh, oh, I remember this is this was one of the things that Jordan and I were talking about in real time. Um, Disney canceled the theatrical release for Soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's going to premiere on Disney Plus in December, December time. Uh, but and, it's go not going to be thirty dollars like Mulan. Mulan, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. what do you think happened there? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I briefly talked to Jordan about this because I was like, oh, I have so many, so many thoughts. And one of them is like, I feel bad for Soul because yeah. mm. I think Disney mm. gave itself its own bad strategy and said, mm. oh, we can't do that anymore. That strategy didn't work. We clearly didn't make any returns on Mulan. And it's just mm. like, I don't know, maybe because Mulan might have been bad. So <laughs> Yeah, and also, I don't think anybody was clamoring to spend $30 on Mulan. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's the thing, too, because it's just like, why would you want to ask, or why would you mm. think that the audience would be willing to pay, like, another expensive premium on a movie that they're going to want to keep, they, they think they want to keep forever, even though they don't know if they like the movie enough to keep forever. Mm -hmm. um, I will spend $5 to rent Soul for like mm. a day on Disney Plus on top of what we pay for Disney Plus subscriptions. But if this is how Disney's going to react to like the whole sub subscription like premium basis thing, I'm like, uh, I don't know. I, I think you just did a bad strat. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, Those it really doesn't it doesn't make any sense to me to like mm. pay thirty dollars to have access to it on a in a program that you're already paying a monthly subscription for. Yeah. Like just put it on like Apple movies or whatever. Like put it on the digital market space. Yeah. And yeah. and pay for it that way. Like it really is confusing. <laughs> and and yeah, if if they had done this first with Soul I probably would have been stupid enough to pay thirty dollars. <laughs> well, that's, probably, that's what I was gonna. It probably would have <laughs> yeah. worked. Well, is there a I movie out there in. that you would have paid for? Like people talked about Black Widow being one of those movies. I would have paid thirty dollars for In the Heights. Mm. Oh yeah, the Lin Manuel mm -hmm. uh, the, sure. the musical. musical. I would pay. Yeah, I would pay thirty dollars for that. Yeah. 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 But not Mulan. Yeah. I would have done that for Hamilton. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Ooh. That, well, because well, sorry. Go ahead, Jordan. No, you you talk. I, no, no, no. Would you pay for a cheese? No. Whoa. Would you pay for what? Cheese? Would you pay for a cheese? I heard. I heard we were What's talking. Oh, no. Where is he? Did Get he out of here. Me? I heard we were talking cheese. What's the Oh what's my the god, someone brought Noel in. She right. is Noel in the VMix right now too. I, can't, I cannot can't believe, believe it. I can't believe. <laughs> Sam, you did this. <laughs> No, I'll explain yourself. Crafty no yeah. oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> Am I in? Oh, Sam, I'm in! I'm coming! 
I, I feel like a wrestler. Okay. I feel just, like a wrestler coming Oh, my God. Okay. It's John <laughs> Cena. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So right. what is this I hear? Because I heard someone was talking about cheese and I heard a little birdie told me we were talking about cheese. You were the cheese. one you were the, the one, one talking about cheese. <laughs> we need to hear this cheese rationale. Start okay. from the top. So okay, Just from the us. top. Okay, from the top. <laughs> so so yep. how how it works is scientifically, mathematically, alphabetically, chromatically, uh, uh chronologically, if you oh. eat cheese with anything else, whether it be like with crackers with some salami pastrami <laughs> with some macaroni whatever as long as you eat cheese with oh. something else it's good it's okay in my book but good how eat, good as in it's it's so it's uh it's, it's morally, morally right. and ethically it's, it's <laughs> correct now if you eat cheese by itself <laughs> i think i i swear i read several several pieces of literature on this matter i think and if you eat cheese by itself that he wrote <laughs> yes, that I that are authored by Noel. If you if you eat cheese by itself, I swear, sociopathic tendencies. You need to be looked after. Don't trust you. So that's my that's my stance on cheese. Don't eat it by itself. That's weird. Don't so like, don't do that. What's your stance on like string cheese? Oh, terrible, terrible. <laughs> okay, what would you like eat string cheese in, with? That was just like, that's intended to be eaten, or like those little ba are they baby bells? You yes. know what they're talking. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. the baby, baby bell. Even worse. Even worse. <laughs> Even more <laughs> sketchy. Even more sketchy. Because why? I don't eat those, what but I'm the, still curious. It's, a, it's, it's, it's in a wax. I'm not a sociopath. Thing. It's in a weird wax thing. Can't trust that. Can't trust any of it. What? One, it tastes so. That's gross. what cheese comes in, Noel. It tastes so <laughs> gross. But that I can't trust it either. Again, as soon as you take it out of the wax and then you eat it with something else, but if you eat it by itself. Can't trust you. Voting what you out. What about wine and Kick. cheese? Wait, what about wine? Okay, so wine and cheese, fine. As long as there's an and or an oh, ampersand, you, that's you're, choosing, you're choosing. You're so. choosing cheese and water. Cheese yeah. and coke. Yeah. What is the, yeah. Any drink? cheese and cheese. I think. I think. Well, well, cheese and wine. I think that's cultural. I think that's like a sign of like you're sophisticated, right? So I think that's okay. I think that. I think that's fine. But just cheese See, this by is where it starts to. You start to get a little shaky. <laughs> Yeah, and now you're cop. They're cop. Oh, so like, the ratio. Yeah. Like, what if you have like like chips and into into queso, and it's mostly cheese. That no, see, that's fine. That's fine because the thing is, you're still using that chip as like a as a tool, or <laughs> even as like a vessel to to so a there degree. Needs to be a vehicle. A vehicle yeah, exactly. For the it's okay. just for transport. It's for trans. Okay. It's, it's great. Except with wine. And so you know, and wine is yeah. Sam so, Sam yeah. said it best though. Sam said it best. It's he said that it's it's, it's about balancing out these flavors so but cheese by itself is just too much just too much but if you if you eat it with something or if you enjoy it with something else balances out really rounds it out it's ethically acceptable just throwing that out there just throwing ethically that out. acceptable this is a ted talk yes. <laughs> yes. cheese cheese just Did eat you it bring with something slides? please what was there an incident that spurred this uh particular yeah, who hurt you yeah, yeah, what cheese cheese hurt you? which cheese which hurt cheese, cheese hurt you are you Man. lactose intolerant uh i don't think so i don't think so i mean like maybe if i eat like i don't know an entire pizza by myself then that's too much for my, for my own for <laughs> okay, my own well. body but that's I, mean, about... I think most people would just get sick <laughs> I, I was gonna say it's like is it the cheese that's the problem when you eat the pizza or is it everything else <laughs> that's that's yeah. fair that that's fair that's fair. but the thing is the thing that, that i think is always funny is every time i go to an event with other people because i i rarely go out everyone always tries <laughs> to get me to eat cheese by itself and i just can't do it to me maybe it's just the fact that my my taste buds just hate eating cheese like by itself i can't name a cheese that i eat that i'm just like oh this is amazing i'll just eat a lot of this so that's well, my you know thing. that's fine noel it's just you don't have to like throw other people <laughs> it's just, you don't have to call them saying that they're weirdos. <laughs> they can't be trusted i can't That's the thing. i can't i can't trust them to care about other people empathy <laughs> is a thing. it's just, just maybe, cheese maybe. <laughs> this, is a, this is a bold leap because i'm like here's That's the thing I can't That's think of a lot of times where I've just eaten cheese by itself. Like to do it like you take a bite out of an apple, the way See, you just like chew yeah. into a hunk of And that's cheddar, why I trust like... you, Hannah. And that's how uh, I knew that's how I knew but... you were gonna be you were gonna be FaZe. That's how I knew. Cause I was like, I knew it. Does does FaZe <laughs> eat cheese by itself? 
Oh, she can't. <laughs> she doesn't like Josh. Josh, you wrote some stuff. She doesn't like cheese. She doesn't right. like fruit. She doesn't <laughs> like. <laughs> it's true. There's some it's canon true. stuff we, yeah. we can get into. Oh my god, Good point. Oh, that's great. But that was it. Uh, that was all I had. I don't know right. else how to how to exit this. Do I just like do I just duck at it? Just do like yeah, we'll cheese. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, like. like... Uh, oh my god! <laughs> oh man. Thanks, Noel. Whisked, whisked away by the cheese gods. Bye, Noel. Bye. He's crazy. <laughs> and all his cheese fanaticism. Yeah. I love it. He I love it. Say what you will about his stance, he believes it. Adam. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is like Hamilton, yeah. where Hamilton voted for the person that he didn't agree yeah. with, but it was because yeah. he believed yeah. in something. Yeah. If it came down, yeah. Yeah. that's right. If it came down between mm-hmm. Noel and Aaron Burr, <laughs> Noel has beliefs. We vote for Noel. Yeah. <laughs> And it doesn't have to be cheese. politically. Like he, yeah. he just has cheese beliefs, and that's enough for Alexander <laughs> Hamilton. He will take a stand, whether the stand is valid or justified. Yeah. Or he matter. has one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you, thank oh. you, Sam, Tyler, and Mike for coordinating that. Well, while we were, I, while we yeah, were doing I saw. I see the slacks now. Yeah. yeah me too. <laughs> oh um. no. <laughs> I had my notifications off. Yeah. yeah. I, I just kept oh, getting pinged and I was amazing. like, what is this? I don't know. I should just keep doing the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It can wait. Well, I don't remember what we were talking about, but I'm looking forward to watching Soul. One way or the other. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yes. H- Hannah was in the middle of a thought. And then Noel went, are we talking about cheese? And it's like, not. <laughs> yeah. But like, no, that's okay, not. Noel. It's totally what fine. I think I was gonna say, I think we were talking about just the the, the price. Mm-hmm. I, I was gonna say, I think that what I had heard when that decision came out about um, the cost for Mulan was that someone was saying it was they were extrapolating, well, generally like breaking down the cost of like a family going to the movies. Yes. It would be, you know, forty dollars for a fa- like more than forty dollars, I guess. Not for me. Before. I have I have draft house season pass, so I see. Well, not, <laughs> yeah. not everyone. That, that's that. paying off for you right now. <laughs> it's, yeah. It, it, oh, yeah. They were gracious enough to pause for everyone. Me too. I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 But I think that was the idea of like most of what they were anticipating was like people who would see that in theaters are. Yeah, I guess they're banking on like families with kids and if they're giving you a rental for it they're anticipating more than one person is going to watch it so they want but again is that the right strategy i don't think yeah so. it, mm. it comes down to as well like how do you quantify like people watching everything else they put on there that was mm. made specifically for that platform like the mandalorian like mm. right you that whole family that was watching the mandalorian does it really break down to five dollars a month or whatever it is you know mm. like I don't yeah. know. It seems it seems like those scales are like totally off with yeah. with putting it I on can, there. I don't think there. I didn't hear any other explanation for why they would they did it that way. I think they're just trying to. They're, I think they're just throwing I, darts at the wall and seeing what I, happens. That's a valid. I think part of it too is just like Mulan costs so much money. Yes, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like they're trying to see if there's any way they can just like kind of make it even mm-hmm. or break even on that one. And I mean, the they're $30. also losing money. They're also everywhere losing money. Else. <laughs> yeah, across yeah. The I think it was a big uh. mistake for them to tell us when it was going to be on Disney Plus for free. You know, like oh, that it was yeah. going to come out in December for, for everybody if you didn't People buy it early. Like, I was like, oh, well, then I'm going to wait. I can wait a couple more months for Mulan. Yeah. 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 We're in quarantine for, like, ever. Yeah. We can yeah. wait. <laughs> oh. It's nice to have something to look forward to. Yeah. yeah. Three yeah. months? That's like a week in quarantine time. <laughs> quarantine time. <laughs> it just flies. <laughs> time is an, is an illusion, guys. Remember. <laughs> it is. We yeah. talk about this a lot. Constantly. <laughs> um, um, do you want to talk about uh, your... Haunting of Bly Manor show that you watched? Oh, have you guys watched Haunting of Bly Manor? No. Not yet. I want to start tonight, oh. actually. I thought Josh is like excited little like, No, yes. I want to. I loved the first season. It was okay. so good. I'm, I'm really scared. The Haunting of Hill House. Hannah, did you watch? No, because I'm she's, scared. She's oh. scared. <laughs> I saw like one clip of uh, the, like the long take, I think, oh, of the first yeah. season. Oh, yeah. And I did not watch the show. I think I read a summary of one of the 
spookies. I'm not going to say because I don't know what's considered spoilers, <laughs> even spookies? though there's like a second season out. Yeah. Um, about a particular female spooky in the first <laughs> season. Female spooky. I don't know if there spooky. are that many because I didn't watch it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I had nightmares just from reading about the spooky. Oh, my Oof. God. <laughs> I literally had night. I couldn't sleep and I didn't watch the show. So that tells you what a kind of baby I am. Uh-huh. Uh, Jordan, have you baby. watched the haunting stuff? No, I am also not a horror a spooky mm. guy. Um, I like I like spooky comedy. Like uh, mm. my favorite horror movie is Cabin in the Woods. I love oh. that movie. Oh. Yes. It's a great movie. And, uh, yeah. All, all, Hannah's saying the word spooky over and over, and spookies I'm just sorry. Re- reminded me of the show on HBO, Losis Spookies, which is Losa a great spookies, show. Yeah. Oh, that looks that hilarious. Is, that show is very good. I highly recommend that. I used spooky because I didn't know if, like, even saying what things were in the first. I don't know what's going to be spoilers. I, is that a who's to say? Who's to say? Just, just, just what haunting. Is, That's a what that means, right? Spooky. Could be a ghoul. Could be so, a so goblin. Spooky is Can all encompassing. Ghoul of haunt. All those. Okay. I don't know. Who's um, to say? Who's to say? So valid points all around. <laughs> I am not into horror as well, mm. but I think the biggest thing about the Haunting of Hill House, which is the first series of the this like anthology that they mm. have going on. It was so highly rated or like really talked about amongst a lot of people because a lot of people kind of equated it to like even people who don't like horror will mm. actually have uh, something to like about Haunting of Hill House. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it's a cross it's a cross genre horror. It's not just mm. like horror, it's like drama. It is about um, this family, you know, like yeah, you you've heard the spiel, Haunting mm-hmm. of Hill House. It's really good. Um I have watched so many video essays on it because I'm the person, I mentioned this like online, I am the person who like, if I know I'm not going to watch something, I will watch a video essay on it so I can just like give myself that summary, but what still you, be in the know. What did you do that for like recently? And I was telling you, just watch the thing. I want you to watch the thing. There's, there were so many things because I was you right to next be more to specific. you. I know, I I'm think, so sorry. I think, in gener- I think in general, it was Game of Thrones. Like you never watched yes. Game of Thrones. Yeah, because I would watch um, uh, Jonathan from The Queer Eye. He mm-hmm. would, um, he did Game of Thrones. Like he would have like his own recap episodes of Game of Thrones. <laughs> but those, those are, are funny. funny if you watch Game of Thrones and then watch <laughs> <laughs> It seems like Issa would beg, beg to differ. Yeah. Funny without <laughs> watching it. Oh, yeah, that's right. I would watch this YouTube channel, New Rockstars, because they would be like, I have a breakdown of every Game of Thrones episode. And Jordan would be like, just watch Game of Thrones. I'm like, they're pointing out stuff I did. I would I would not have noticed. <laughs> so that was me. More enjoyable. <laughs> <laughs> that was me in Haunting of Hill House. I actually ended up watching a haunting of Hill House like the last like week or two, oh, wow. and I I hate spookies, uh, <laughs> but I would of not of any kind <laughs> of any kind. And every time I knew a spooky would happen because they were very good with um they're like uh with like ramping up kind of that terror and tension, mm. I would just look at my embroidery and start embroidering aggressively <laughs> more. And I would just go, oh, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> Into my Aww. embroidery while I'm watching with my SO. And so we ended up watching Bly Manor. And mm. since like no one ha- else here has really watched it, so I'm not really going to talk about it beyond like the what we're talking about in terms of Hill House. And also it's, it's spooky time. It's time to talk mm-hmm. about spooky stuff. Um, uh, Josh, I don't know if this is going to color your opinion of it. Oh, man, just rewatch Hill House. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. That's me. Then, honestly, that's what I wanted to do. Is, like, is that oh, your opinion? I really want to watch the first season. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, good to I, know. Well, so we have very rank opinions. And I say rank because rank. I usually use the term onions as opinions. So my okay. onions are very strong. Uh-huh. Are, mm-hmm. are your About onions going to make me cry? No, they'll make you... They'll make you Maybe they'll make people who like Bly Manor cry. Oh, <laughs> interesting. interesting. Because we didn't like Bly Manor. <laughs> and you finished it? We finished it. Okay. Like, All right. it, it was, uh, we were hoping, well, like, in the first episode, we were like, okay, how do we feel about this? And then we were kind of waiting for things. And then at the end, we were like, oh, we, 
we didn't like it. So oh, this was a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really interesting show to talk about in terms of why we didn't like it. Mm-hmm. Because well, sometimes that's just as valuable. Like yeah. you get yeah. entertainment out of that. <laughs> The one thing that we kept talking about was how we kept comparing it to Hill House. And mm-hmm. when we were talking about it at first, like amongst each other, we we're like, is it fair to really do that comparison? Because they're anthologies, like it's different, like it's a different story and stuff. But then mm-hmm. after a certain point, I was like, no, I think we have to start comparing it because mm-hmm. Hill House really set a standard for like what a uh, cross genre horror can be. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like a lot of people I know that are into the spooky stuff and horror stuff, they will watch like horror movies and they'll be like, oh, that was okay. And it was because it might not have been scary enough for mm-hmm. them to think, oh, that's so scary. Like I have an emotional response. And instead they kind of concentrate on all the other unfortunate failings of the movie. Like, mm-hmm. oh, the plot was like, all right, because it wasn't scary enough. Or, oh, the characters didn't really make any sense, but because it wasn't scary enough. So if mm-hmm. you have enough scary, that might be good enough for you to forget <laughs> every bad thing. <laughs> so, uh, lesson learned. <laughs> well, we just weren't scared. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Well, Maybe that means I should watch that season. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right? <laughs> Maybe, Hannah. Maybe that's an endorsement for me. <laughs> I, it, whenever you hear it, just like just look down and be like, it's scary, don't look, and then you, you'll know when it passes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of glad, though, that you didn't like it, because the thing I'm, I wanted to talk about is something I like a lot, because yes. I think I found the show of the year. Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> For 2020. Oh, um, my gosh. And, Hannah, you're going to be very excited about this because that show is, is I... a show <gasps> called Ted Lasso. Yes! yes! Josh and I are the first Josh watched it, too! Josh, you watch it, too? Yes. I love okay. Ted Lasso. Josh and, I are, Josh and I literally <laughs> wanted to start a Ted Lasso fan club yeah. at Rooster Teeth. We were like, we uh, are you the number just, one fans. We, we called the Greyhounds. <laughs> yes. <laughs> love yes. it. It's so okay. This is one of so, the things Jordan and I were, I was like, all right, yeah. Jordan, sell me. Well, I was like, I was, now three v one, three v one. So, yes. so the things I want to talk about, and and this plays into how the show itself works. On paper, this show should not be good. Nobody 100%. should. Yeah. Nobody should want to watch this show, and nobody the show should be bad. <laughs> but so if you're not familiar, the character Ted Lasso is a character <laughs> from NBC Sports Network's promos. For the uh, English Premier League, when NBC got the rights, they would do these commercials where Jason Sudeikis plays this character named Ted Lasso, who is a uh, American football coach who gets hired by a Premier League team to coach soccer. And it's just jokes about how he doesn't understand the rules of soccer and stuff. He doesn't know what offside is. He didn't know that you could Mm -hmm. tie games and stuff. And when those commercials were coming, I was like, oh, yeah, this is kind of funny. Whatever. Mm -hmm. And now Mm -hmm. seven years later, they come out with a show based on an NBC property that coming out on Apple TV, produced what? by Warner Brothers Television. Mm-hmm. It it shouldn't make any sense or anything, <laughs> but the show is very good and very wholesome, and it's exactly so, what yeah. we need in it's 2020. So, wow. so his whole thing is kind of like, everybody treats the character, who is this very optimistic, kind of like, golly gee, like, you know, I'm gonna do my best no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, he, you know, every, everyone is immediately skeptical and yeah. he wins everyone over by just being himself. And that's what the show does as well. So in some ways it had to be Ted Lasso and it had to be <laughs> this like skepticism that everybody is presented with. And then the show wins you over, like he wins everyone in the show over as well. Yeah. Uh, it is, uh, partly created and adapted by Bill Lawrence, Bill uh, Lawrence yep. who Bill did Lawrence. Scrubs in Cougar Town. Oh, uh, and okay. probably some other stuff that I don't remember. Spin um, City. Zach Braff oh. directs an episode, <laughs> which is pretty interesting. Um, but the show is the show is great. I we yeah. I watched all ten episodes. My wife doesn't even care about soccer. I love soccer, but like she doesn't care, do. and she loved the show. <laughs> so yeah, uh, highly recommend. I think it's the show of the year. Uh, wow, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> super positive Definitely. and like. And it's just so nice. And um, 
there's a bit where like every morning he brings the owner of the, the of the biscuits. club oh the, yeah these the biscuits, biscuits yeah and she loves them so much um and she's like trying to figure out where he's getting them but it turns out like at the end of the episode it's revealed he's just making them for her that's um, so sweet but that recipe is online and holly <gasps> made some and they're pretty good whoa <laughs> yeah. takes it jordan like, is you, so you, prepared, you prepared oh my this. god Same like man. like that like one one cut he did oh man yeah. this is amazing. <laughs> show of the year I, fr- the- I shut that up earlier you know, I had to make <laughs> and do a you're hot really thing. excited gosh, gosh. Really wow you're really so, excited I'll slack you, uh, Hannah and Josh, the recipe yes. for you. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Oh God, seriously. Yeah, it's, it's an absolute delight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just it's so... It's on Apple TV, right? Apple TV yeah. Plus, yeah. yeah. Apple TV okay. Plus. And all 10 episodes are out. Mm-hmm. Just get a free it. trial. If you don't have it, just knock it out. Okay. You, can, you can knock it's, it out in like two days and it's, at and most. It's, yeah, it's a super easy, fun watch. And I think I was talking to... I forget who I was talking to about it, but I was saying that... Um, what I love about it is he is basically Paddington in human form and everyone knows <laughs> how obsessed oh I am with Paddington. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. And it's really fascinating from like, if you want to talk about from like a character study perspective, he's a, he's a type of character I feel like you don't see that often. And that's mm. not to say he won't change, but at least in this first season, he's really like a flat art character. He really yeah. doesn't change oh. he's he's kind of affecting everyone around else him. exactly yeah. oh, which is exactly how paddington is where paddington <laughs> comes into the, the this context of the story with a set of ideals and morals and um a perspective and is challenged by everyone around him and ultimately he holds fast to those ideas and perspectives and the people around him are influenced in a positive way by him yeah. and ted lasso is very much the same and i feel like you don't see that very often mm. um and particularly Maybe I'm wrong, but like particularly with characters that are like older characters, like mm-hmm. I just he it's really interesting the way they write his character where you're not expecting him. There's no like there's no ounce of cynicism yeah, directed yeah. at him for being and this this person. And it's he really has, refreshing. He has other things going on in his life that are yeah. like, mm-hmm. like revealed in the first episode and stuff that it's like, how are you always so positive? But you know, yeah. like as you go on, like you learn more about him, and like you know, he's just—he's—he's just, he's just a good coach. <laughs> it does a good job of building out the the tertiary characters too. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. even you start loving all of the other characters. Yeah, you're too. like, I love this football team, and I oh, want them to be I would, successful. I would die for Sam. Like, <laughs> yeah, and and Danny Rojas. <laughs> I know it's it's really it's really sweet, and I think it's it's great because they um, they explore lots of different types of personalities mm-hmm. and a lot of which, different which ways is of dealing kinda, with conflict. Kind of what ah. you get as a as a coach, you know, or like mm-hmm. a manager. You it's a bunch of different personalities coming together. You need to manage uh, and inspire, you know, and you gotta and the, tackle them in different ways. And it's mm-hmm. a bunch of people from all over the world coming together. Mm-hmm. Uh, from different backgrounds and they got different personalities and you know how do they clash and stuff like the two main pl- uh, player characters like they just hate each other <laughs> so much Gosh. but even then there's like really great examinations of like how they interact with each other and why yeah. they have the animosity that they have and and you know it, it's interesting the characters the journeys of the main journeys you get to see of character development are in these kind of side characters Mm -hmm. Mm. and even like there's only really two primary female characters um Mm -hmm. in the Mm -hmm. show it's it's a men's football team so it's not that hard to you know expect but i love both of those female characters and i love their relationship that their relationship is so good so good and it it could have easily been something entirely different um and the way they build them together is just so wonderful um, it's just a and Juno super... Temple's just delightful mm-hmm. uh, yeah yeah um she's yeah. great I could literally talk about it forever yeah. <laughs> so Issa you have to watch it even okay. even even though it's a show about a, a soccer manager <laughs> managing his his soccer team in England you're gonna like it <laughs> I really think you will it's very I great. so I am actually curious Josh how did you come across Ted Lasso. Uh, it's the Bill Lawrence of it all. Uh, <laughs> I, okay. I love, yep. I love Scrubs a lot. I really liked Spin City, the show he did before that with Michael J. Fox. Um, oh. And because Bill is like, he's 
just he has this commitment in his sitcoms to be like we'll do big broad comedy but we're also going to try to make you cry at the same time and he mm-hmm. did that really well in scrubs because mm-hmm. it took place in a hospital like it just lended itself to that really well but mm. that's the thing he did really well in ted lasso like it's really funny and really broad at times and it's about football but like almost <laughs> every episode like brought me to tears at some point or another especially like that yeah. last episode the oh, last God. episode so <laughs> beautiful and like <laughs> heartwarming it's like this giant warm hug that we all need in 2020 and yeah yeah it's just it's so it's so good and y'all said so much so many good things about it it's like yeah to echo everything y'all said it's just like this beautiful warm hug we all need <laughs> oh i think it's so everything else is so cynical having something that's yeah. really wholesome and positive is like mm-hmm. so desperately needed yeah i was gonna say like there's this when um hannah you mentioned yeah or hannah you and jordan both mentioned like this character of ted um just kind of this being almost this like center of optimism and everyone else around him kind of changes it reminds me so much of how a lot of like big award-winning tv Mm. um in the past decade or so has been like actually the opposite it's always about Mm. these characters who are such assholes or like these huge it's all about anti-heroes yeah yeah and like actually the one thing i think a lot about um or i have been because i've been watching video essays of a show i've never seen um (laughs) is uh, bojack horseman oh okay (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) Yeah, which everyone, every uh, video essay always starts off with, why are you watching this if you haven't watched BoJack Horseman? Watch BoJack Horseman. And I'm like, I don't know. I'd rather just watch people talk about BoJack Horseman. Yeah. But it, it seems like, you know, and considering everyone really, um, they, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They will also kind of die on this hill of like BoJack Horseman is one of the best animated mm-hmm. series ever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, his character is like kind of it sounds almost like the complete opposite of ted lasso of how Mm. this person is just this constant cycle of cynicism and pessimism um or this horse i should say Uh, (laughs) horse man horse man yeah that's right horseman um (laughs) and how everyone around him is kind of influenced uh on at some point they have been influenced by his cynicism. And it reminds me a lot of like all these other shows that are always about these assholes who everyone, the the catharsis is supposed to be when they change. Mm. Um, and I guess my, my thought to that is like, but why should I care about these assholes mm-hmm. from the get-go who have no, like there is no stake for them for me to care about, mm. I guess. And then here's, as you guys are explaining Ted Lasso, I was like, oh, you know, no, no, this 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 does sound like something I'd be... I'd probably like a lot. So, if you're okay. if you're burnt out by like all those other types of shows, this yeah. will be a breath of fresh air. That's yeah. a thing too. That's one thing that I thought was so exciting about Ted is like I think it's continuing this trend that maybe like started around Parks and Rec and The yeah. Good Place. Uh, yeah, Ted yes. of like we can have optimism in comedy. It doesn't have yeah. to be like it's yeah, yeah, you don't funny. have to point out like, oh man, life's a drag, and so yeah, everyone we know that. Is, mm. You're aware. Trust me. Very aware. <laughs> Yeah. You're aware. <laughs> I don't need the media I consume to bum me out too. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> no, but it's and I think that's the the important thing too, Josh. Is like it's funny. It's yeah. so mm-hmm. funny. Like I laugh out loud watching that show. Oh which yeah. I think a lot of people think like some humor has to if it's cynical it punches down and it's it's kind of mean spirited yeah no and this yeah. one definitely does and it's not like that at all it's the genuine interactions between these really like three-dimensional characters that they've Mm -hmm. created and it's about the relationships that these characters are building and i think jordan said it really well what's so successful about the show is like i feel like you as a viewer come into it very incredulous Mm -hmm. you're like how does this work how am i gonna root for this guy like this guy's a total dweeb like like, why is this even a show (laughs) yeah why is he even why is he so positive like he's this is annoying but Mm -hmm. just like all of the characters in the show like you get won over by him mm-hmm. and it's a mirror to the the way that everything is going on in the show you find yourself as a viewer being like oh, he's sucking me in i'm yeah. endeared i'm oh, so no, yeah. endeared <laughs> it's you like know? oh no i i like him oh no now. i yeah. care oh no he's adorable <laughs> oh no they all care about each other so much like it's really yeah. really nice and i think it's it's very much a uh, a very positive way to look at how you can deal with conflict even down to like the funny things of like 
when they were talking about relegation, mm-hmm. when they were explaining relegation, and the, the British players are like, wait, so what happens in America when you're relegated? <laughs> and he's like, well, we just we, play out the rest of our games, and yeah. that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, like, no, we, no, we don't have that. They just, we they don't just, have that. They just, they just go just along with the rest of their season in, uh, in half-empty yeah. stadiums. <laughs> it's just nice to, to see how you know they address, like, and they do address some like heavy topics in it, um, and it's just really well done. Yeah. So basically, Ted Lasso, please give us our own podcast to talk about Ted Lasso. <laughs> yeah. We can do it forever. That'd be um, great. Also, I, this is, I don't know if this is worth mentioning, but Bill Lawrence went to the same college as me. So he also didn't go to film school and made some of the wow. greatest shows yeah. I've seen. There you go. Oh, so Ooh, jealous. Interesting. Really awesome. cool. And he's a super nice dude. I have met him one time and he was amazing. Wow. Even, even better news, it's been renewed for season two already. Which is, oh! uh, I'm so excited. I was terrified yeah. if nothing would come of it because, like, I don't know how many people are watching it, but it's yeah. had such good critical response. That was my hope. Yeah. I mean, the I reason that it had been renewed, that's exciting. I saw you, like, prattling on about it on Twitter, and I was like, okay, cool. That's that's nice. <laughs> prattling on. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm, I'm ranting. ranting. <laughs> I am the woman who wrote a literal art, like a, a an article about Paddington that was like put onto the internet about why it was amazing. So I am not ashamed. But um, but I it's um, it is getting a lot of like discussion on like I listen to like two soccer podcasts and like both oh, of them wow. have brought it up. Yeah, and like oh, that's how funny. much they love it, and it's like, well, okay, like but but it's not even about the soccer part of it, like. Yeah, the soccer yeah. is just the it's just the dress setting like it's the platform yeah. and like it's the hospital for like a medical drama exactly yeah, just yeah. Like yeah. The, the background yeah yeah, yeah. i wonder if they're... soccer fans would like not enjoy it as much because no they just i like it. the backdrop but that's good to hear yeah yeah they there's some like little nods and jokes here and there for like the the known soccer fan but like mm-hmm. like the song they play uh in the last episode um Man, I don't want to, the the what it's you'll never walk alone. You're, I that, was I was wondering when they were saying you'll ne- doing you'll never walk alone. Yeah, that is, is a Arsenal. song sung by Liverpool, uh, Liverpool which is it. which is my favorite soccer team. <laughs> so I like that moment was even, up. was even he was like, up, more strong. Yeah, oh, <laughs> it's so good. Oh, that's so. nice. Yeah, I'll watch Spookies if you watch. Soccer? There you I go. <laughs> okay, I'll trade you. Too. I'll trade you soccer's for spookies. Soccer's for spookies. <laughs> oh, that's a good. That's a good episode title, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> soccer's for spookies. It will make okay. great. no sense to anyone but us. <laughs> but us <laughs> until they watch this. I I wish you would watch Hill Hill House though. I it's a spookier one. But that's the it's first beca- season, right? Hill House is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Because it is legitimately like. <laughs> Oh, that is a spooky worth watching, Hannah. She's gonna okay. get nightmares. I, you will get nightmares. It's ah! okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, I, it's not a very oh, fair man. trade. <laughs> that we I, you can do like an episode of Hill yeah. House, an episode of Ted, episode of Hill House, yeah. oh! episode of Ted. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm also I'm idea. watching My Hero Academia, which is oh, also yeah. like. Uh, equal parts really uplifting and delightful and then other parts like i am literally screaming oh yeah in my apartment so like it's oh, a yeah. good a, a good balance i feel like of the two so, hannah hannah feels everything i feel <laughs> everything so deeply that is why i relate to dick who i was like i cry over everything <laughs> oh god i feel everything deeply and that's why i'm just i also have a vivid imagination which is why horror really gets me because i'm like i can imagine Someone yeah. standing in they, front of my bed. Yeah, behind behind my closed eyes, I know they're there, even though they're not. Like yeah, that situation is very specific to Hill House, by the way. <laughs> that's because I'm talking about the spooky that I had nightmares about that I didn't watch. <laughs> that's why. That's the that nightmare is, I had. Hannah, Hannah would happens. you check mark? Would you check prefer mark. like they always say like oh they don't show like the monster or anything because what your imagination comes up with it's is worse. so much worse. Yeah. So would you prefer them to just show the scary thing so that oh, your God, imagination yeah. doesn't have to do the oh, work? Yeah. I think the thing that scares me about Hill House is the fact that, like, I always, like, a lot of media, if I don't watch it, I get it sort of, like, through osmosis on social media. Oh, and yeah. And so it's, like, I just see, like, tweets about it or, like, to your point, Issa, like, video essays. And the, like, oh, there's, like, here's the 15 
hidden go like ghosts oh, yes. in the background, and I'm like, yeah. that's my nightmare. <laughs> 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 that they're just gonna appear, and I'm gonna <laughs> notice them, but it's not gonna be acknowledged. And then I'm just I, gonna be walking around my apartment, going, where are they? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I have to. I have to. I feel like Hill House is kind of not ruined horror for me, but it has made me seen it or i the metaphor i always use is like it has made me see the zipper of mm. the monster mm. creature mm. and that example i use because that was a specific episode in doug where oh. um oh, doug right. was so afraid of watching <laughs> this horror one. movie yeah, and it turns out, like, he taped his eyes open, and it turns out he just started laughing because he saw because it's the so monster bad. had a zipper. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel, it. yeah, it's it's one of those things. After, like, seeing Bly Banner, I was just like, mm-hmm. oh, I you understand. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I understand what's scary to me now. Mm-hmm. And some of the other stuff is not as scary. Um, so my essay's trying to get me to watch The Conjuring, and I was like, not yet. <laughs> like, uh, maybe next week when I'm strong. <laughs> I feel like the closer it is to being, well, that's probably the entire thesis of horror. Like, the cl- closer to being feasible it is, the more terrifying it is. Yeah. Um, because it's more easily accessible to our imagination. We're like, I could yeah. see that happening. Whereas, like, you know, a big gruesome monster is still scary, but... To me, it's not as frightening as like something lurking in your home. Yes, you know that's What's the that spooky. Be- What's that behind you, Hannah? Don't talk about <laughs> Angela Lansbury like that. I think I just, I think I just saw Angela Angela's move. Angela's great. Angela's not moving. Don't is say that, that. Is that the murder she wrote board game? It sure is the murder she wrote board game. As soon as Laura got it, I was like, I need this. <laughs> I created an eBay account just to get that one. That's amazing. I love it so much. She does is just it, loom over my shoulder. Is, is it like Hannah? Clue? How does it work? Oh, yeah, that's right. It, it is kind of like Clue. Sorry, okay. were you going to say Isa? I was just going to say, Hannah, you're my Ted Lasso at this point. No. <laughs> that is true. the greatest single compliment I've ever received. Hannah, I would go as far as to say you're, you're the Ted Lasso of this entire company. That's egregious. Aww. That's too. No, I can't accept it. It's too kind. It's too much. I will be I, the I the assistant coach who's trying. <laughs> coach Beard. Co- well, Nate. not even Coach Beard. I wish I could be Coach Beard. Coach Beard is cool. Um, oh my god, why can't I remember his name? The cute guy Nate. who's Nate. Coach Nate. Yeah, yes. Coach Nate. I'm Nate. I'm trying my best, and I don't <laughs> succeed very often. I get, oh, my God, Issa, this should get you to watch the show. Literally, Coach Nate tries so hard, and he's the one who helps load bags into the buses when they go on, like, away games. And he got bumped inside and locked into it, and he just had to sit in the undercarriage of the bus, and he fell asleep curled up in a little ball. And it's the most <laughs> adorable thing I've ever seen because he's so sweet. <laughs> That's so sad. It is. He was fine. They were yeah. looking for him. They got him. Okay. It's fine. Oh, that's so sad. It works out for him. Yeah. It works out in the yeah. end, trust me. He's adorable. <laughs> Nate is like honestly also the heart and soul of that show. I love yeah. him so much. Oh, uh I've been convinced. I will give a uh, book report to you guys back in like Yes. No, yes. I wouldn't say a week, but you know, yeah, within so the month because it's to... the month of spookies. Yeah, it's spooky month. So, feel, spooky yeah. month. Feel free so to I like... need a Ted Lasso. Feel free to like mm-hmm. live slack us as you watch too. Oh, yes. that's a great idea. <laughs> that's a great idea. Please, I would that's be so happy. Great. That would be amazing. It, you're gonna I go have from like, why is he so here. happy all the time? I hate it too. <laughs> Man, Ted, he just he just tries his best. <laughs> I, I have I do have everyone's phone number in here, right? Hannah, I might not have yours. I'm just gonna start uh, start a group text and uh, we'll to, just rename yeah. it like the Ted Lasso podcast. <gasps> yes. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> Make me so happy. Uh. Well, I think that's a great place to end on. Han- when <laughs> Hannah's happy. <laughs> oh, I'm just like, like I said, I literally would pay to just spend time with you guys. So the fact that you were like, you want to come talk? I was like, I'll do, I'll do it anytime. Hey, let's get a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> like Hannah. Yes, yeah, I will pay to customer. talk to you guys every week. I love how you offered to do it for free at the beginning of this. <laughs> Just find time on our calendars, and I'm like, I will pay you for your friendship. Oh, good to know. <laughs> well, <Josh>. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan, Josh, and Hannah for this episode Thank of you. I Have Notes. You it was awesome. very good. I love talking 
about stuff with you guys, and it was very fun. Um, and thank you, audience, for joining in and listening to us. If you guys like us, uh, feel free to do that thumb. <laughs> and <laughs> if you have a note, go ahead. Feel free to leave a comment about any notes that you have for us, because this is the show called I Have Notes. Uh, <laughs> and we'll see you next time. <laughs>